All right, and we are back in the lobby bar for the week of December the 26th, 2022. Brian and Michaela with you, and we are coming to you a day late because yesterday, uh, the day after Christmas, uh, I was driving back to North Carolina from Ohio. I was getting out of the cold, although it's still cold here. Uh, cold everywhere, Michaela. Cold everywhere. Uh, basically, the entirety, I don't know, the, I want to say anything north and west except the south, too. I, pretty much all of America got shut down. Everywhere. By massive polar vortex stormage coldness. I hope everybody is safe uh, and that your heating works or that you have access to some wood to burn in your fireplace if you have one. Keep your animals close and your windows shut and your pipes yeah. covered. It, it, it's <laughs> awful. Like uh, places that have no business being cold, like at Christmas, like, I don't know, the, the Bahamas, the Bahamas were at an all time low. It's so weird. Yeah. Everywhere was, uh, everywhere was cold. Yeah. I was in Ohio. I, we got in, uh, Thursday nights and wind chills like the next morning were down to like 40 below zero. Uh, it was just absolutely crazy. So all you had to do was huddle indoors, uh, hope that the electricity held out. Uh, the internet did not hold out, um, which gave me a lot of free time uh, to have some extra Christmas drinks. So that was always good. Um, but yeah, hopefully everyone out there is safe and warm. And uh, like you said, the the power held out. Your pipes didn't freeze. I was a little concerned about that at the house here in uh, Charlotte because uh, it was real cold here too, well below freezing. Apparently, a lot of people were having issues with that. Uh, we were okay, luckily. And uh, yeah, hopefully everyone listening out there is uh, doing okay as we're going to start thawing out and weathers are going to go. Temperatures are going to go way back yeah. up here in the next week. Uh, all crazy like. But Michaela, it was Christmas. So did you have a nice Christmas? How did the family celebrate? Did you have any fancy meals? Did you do any fancy cocktails to celebrate? Oh my gosh. We did all of that. Uh, we had a lot of fancy meals. We love to entertain. So we've had kind of different folks rolling through our house, still trying to keep the numbers small because we want to, you know, we want to make sure that we keep everyone as healthy as possible. Um, so not like any big, you know, 30 person Christmas parties, anything like that. But we've, we, we did a great prime rib because we're prime rib Christmas people. Uh, turkeys can just take a hike. Uh, <laughs> I think I've, I've had too much turkey in my life. I don't know. Fair. So yeah. we, we've Overrated. done that. Um, uh, the power went out Christmas Eve. Uh, you were talking about these rolling power outages. Uh, basically, all of North and South Carolina decided that they didn't want to have power Christmas Eve. I, I don't really know how that works, but um, power finally came back on and we celebrated by having more eggnog. Um, I, uh, if you'll recall, I think it was last week in the lobby bar, I made this really beautiful eggnog martini. Uh, I did not use our aged eggnog because because I wanted to say that for very special occasions, uh, it doesn't need to be added to anything. But if you were to get one of those eggnogs from like a liquor store, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the case anywhere else, but the Evan Williams one that I bought is the size of a gallon. I mean, it is, it's like a gallon or two. It's huge. And um, I didn't want to drink that straight. So what I did was I made like an eggnog uh, white Russian. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. And so I, I, I want to share that with you today because I really good if you have eggnog and you don't want to just add ice to that sucker anymore. You want to you want to spruce it up a bit. <laughs> yeah, you need to you need to jazz it up. Yeah, they do come in giant uh, batches of that. I guess you're only selling eggnog really like one week of the whole year. So you got to right. got to get your money's worth out of it if you're uh, Evan Williams and all the uh, eggnog uh, makers for the season. Yeah, I, I don't know. This is the first time I bought eggnog because uh, I didn't think I was an eggnog person until you showed me the true meaning of Christmas uh, mm -hmm. with the aged mm -hmm. eggnog recipe about three or four years ago. So um, this is the first time I've done it. I didn't know that. I, I don't I don't think you can buy it in anything other than this giant gallon handle thing. So um, I'll run through the ingredients. Try it at home. See if you like it. Um, it's going to be two ounces of your eggnog, and that eggnog is already going to have some liquor in it because you're buying it at a liquor store. Um, but we're going to add an ounce of Kahlua. We're going to add an ounce of your favorite vodka. Um, if you're going to do flavored vodka, that's fine. I would do like a vanilla. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't go crazy with it um, just because it'll be real sweet. And then um, some cream. And you're going to uh, you're going to put that in a shaker and then pour it in a glass with ice and you're going to drink it and it's going to be real tasty. And OK, yeah, Not if you like right Russians, it, you know, it does the job. It's good. Yeah. It's a nice yeah. Christmassy version. 
That sounds like something the dude would be drinking uh, when Bowling League <laughs> right. is off because the, the power is out for sure. Uh, yeah, eggnog white Russian. That sounds good. That sounds like an excellent way to use up some of that eggnog. You have some leftover. Someone you know brought a bottle of it to your house for the uh, Christmas gathering, something like that. Um, now, I didn't uh, get into the store-bought eggnog. I did have some of our eggnog, the aged eggnog. Uh, you and I both cracked open a jar of that to share with our families uh, over the holidays. I have to say this year's delicious. Delicious as always. It's always really good. Uh, go to the website drinkthemovies.com it is literally i think the first recipe on there under the uh episodes uh tab you can make up your own batch for next year so i got into that and then i do a couple of uh, christmas beers every year um uh, one I wanted to mention, uh, the Great Lakes Christmas Ale. Um, I talked about on the lobby bar having some of those. I also had the 12 Dogs of Christmas Ale, uh, which comes from Thirsty Dog Brewing. That is out of Akron, Ohio. Now, Akron and Cleveland are very close, so it's kind of a heated debate over which of those Christmas sales is better. Uh, Great Lakes is the uh, top dog, of course, but the 12 Dogs of Christmas Ale is a delicious one if you have that in your area. Uh, but another very special beer that I always do on Christmas Eve, uh, I always get the big 750 milliliter bottle of it, but that is the Chimay blue uh, or the Chimay Grand Reserve. Um, I always have that. It's a Belgian Trappist beer. It is quite delicious. Um, it is made, um, you know, by the Trappist monks over in Belgium at the uh, Chimay uh, Monastery. Uh, and they originally had made this as a Christmas beer back in 1954. Um, so oh. it was like it was like a beer de Noel and it was so popular and so delicious that people loved it and they started just making it as a year round beer uh, two years later. So I always grab a couple bottle of those, stick them in the fridge, let them age up for a couple of years. So this year I was drinking a bottle from 2020. Uh, it's kind of my own little Christmas tradition because it's my favorite style of beer um, and I really like oh. it. So um, just kind of the uh, you know, the celebration of doing that and sitting around with family and having one of those. So let us know at home if you do any special uh, celebratory Christmas or holiday uh, drinks or beverages or cocktails or uh, anything like that. Let us know what you got up to here uh, over the Christmas weekend. And we hope that you are safe and sound with uh, all the weather going on, as we mentioned, and staying inside from going to see a movie, because that's what a lot of people did. The box office was a little light. Um, it always had kind of an uphill battle with Christmas being on the Sunday, Christmas Eve on the Saturday. Uh, so going to be pretty light avatar of course took the top spot was 64 million uh puss in boots whitney houston i want to dance with somebody and babylon the three new releases came in two through four and then violent night uh three and a half million dollars to round it out so 64 million dollars pretty light uh for avatar i will say michaela we were expecting a little bit more but i think that the cold and the power being out uh the holiday travel yeah. put a damper in the uh you know the our blue friends from uh, where are they from? Starts with the B. Uh, Pandora. Pandora. Yeah, our friends from Pandora. A uh, little light there, but uh, some signs are looking pretty good. Yeah. I mean, the fact that it's like three and a half hours probably didn't help as well. I mean, I, I, I want to say that, but then Lord of the Rings, I remember debuting on Christmas Day and that was insane. Everybody went and saw that. I I don't know. I think, I think the fact that uh, something like half of Southwest Airlines flights were canceled, so a lot of people's lives were like thrown into not good kind of chaos in the last mm -hmm. week. Um, if you match that up with all of the issues with the weather. So um, what you were saying was that we, we have not seen it yet and we were planning on going this week to, uh, to round right, yeah. out the week. And uh, we can't find tickets here in Charlotte in the Charlotte area. So, I mean, I think it's going to have like a late bloom of, of money coming in. Uh, it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see how that happens in the, the next week. Um Puss in Boots. I did. I will say my my son and my husband watched it, and they thought it was fabulous. Um, okay, which is odd for my husband to say about a Shrek based film. He wasn't. He thinks they're interesting, but he's not a real Shrek fan. But he uh, thought this one was absolutely amazing. So if if that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty good endorsement because uh, he's not a fan usually of these types of films. So I I, I think it probably. Um, is a good one for kids and it's much more uh, appropriate as far as the timing of it. It's not, yeah. you know, three and a half hours long. So for sure, for sure. But yeah, um, as you mentioned, Michaela, yeah, all of the showings uh, here in our area were uh, sold out. I was planning, yeah, to do that sometime this week because we didn't get to in the lead up to Christmas uh, with travel and all that stuff. So yeah, it seems like it's going to pick up a little bit late in the game here. And we say that Avatar is doing bad. Uh, it is worth noting that it is already up to like $900 million worldwide after two weeks. So uh, that's that's really not too bad, I guess, um, all <laughs> things considered. Bad. 
I, I don't have a movie that I've made that's made nine hundred million dollars. So I, I suppose you're right, Brian. I, I, I suppose we'll we'll see how that keeps going because there's not really anything coming out this week. Uh, we have a couple of new releases we'll talk about uh, next week, but nothing really is going to uh, start not an avatar uh down a peg until this next i don't know the 100th ant-man movie comes out or whatever the next uh one of those is it's coming out later in the spring so we'll see what it gets up to and uh good sign i guess uh just overall the box office for the year is over seven billion dollars uh here domestically at least so uh that is pretty good um sign i think things are starting to come back out and uh we're definitely going to be talking about that we've had the golden globes we've had some short lists now for the oscars coming out um and it seems like there's a little bit more competition the last couple years it was pretty much kind of set in stone what these uh kind of top picks were going to be but it seems like there's a little bit more uh you know just films in general coming out so there's a little bit more competition so we'll have to see how that shakes out but i don't know michaela uh since we didn't get tickets to see avatar maybe we'll have to go see babylon i know that's something else we're um excited to go see so uh i don't know we better uh see what we can do about finishing up these uh eggnog white russians our eggnog martinis uh just some eggnog maybe we can sneak <laughs> in some eggnog and uh go check out a movie what do you think i think that's a great idea i will see you in the lobby bar and we'll see everybody next time <laughs>